guys, so for today's media demonstration video, we are going to be using markers and chalk pastel. So when we use chalk pastel for a background, and I'm going to use it in all these background areas, I like to call it chalk rub, and that's when you really do rub it on with a cotton ball, and maybe in these little tiny areas with a Q-tip. It's definitely a time when you use the chalk on the plate and things like that. So this is not for the whole project. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. I'm going to set it aside for now. But the main parts of our drawing today are going to be colored in marker. And so I have the markers out that I think are going to be the right colors for what I'm going to do. And this is a good example of when the multicultural markers are a really good thing to have because you get to have some other shades. So not everything can be just the same brown that uh, comes in the Crayola Classic Packet. So for example, the fries, you know, are probably going to be a combination of these colors. The bun will probably be a combination maybe of these colors, but these are really very handy to have, so I just wanted you to see that. Also, it's really good to have the old brown, like usual, and a gray, um, but I've also got some other colors in here because we're, we're thinking today about cheese and lettuce and maybe avocado uh, or maybe some pickles. We're thinking about tomatoes, onions, uh, whipped cream, cherries. So all of these things have certain kinds of colors, of course, the french fries and the ketchup. So we want to be able to achieve that. We want people to be able to recognize what they're looking at. And yes, they see it because they see your drawing, they see your black lines from your Sharpie. But when you add the color to it in a certain way, it really spells it out for them so that it's really, really clear. It also makes it look really vibrant and really nice. So. I'm going to show you how that works in just a few minutes. Just remember guys, I really want to send you these magnets. I've sent about four of them out last week. So if you want to let your friends know about Arts Hub somehow, some way on social media, whether you um, share a video or like a video or talk about it in class, get other kids to watch them. I'm really working hard to keep Arts Hub going and you can help me by uh, letting your friends know about us too. And I have like 80 of these magnets left. I had a hundred. I'm, I want to mail them out. So please help us out and I'll be happy to send this to you with a special handwritten note to say thank you. All right, guys. So Today we're going to start with coloring with markers and like I said we're going to go into the chalk pastel later for the background, what's called chalk rub. And you guys know how to color with markers, I know you do, and I'm not going to do too much talking about that part. I just want to make sure you're thinking about the color choices you make so that everything stands out and is really as clear as it can be. So for example I'm going to start with the bun and so this is a kind of a nice sort of a nice tan color. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around some of these sesame seeds because they're more of like a yellowish cream color. And so I'll just show you a little bit and then I'll do this in time lapse. So notice how I'm not scribbling. I'm not going up and down and back and forth. I'm kind of just going from side to side here. And that is to create the right texture for this bun. So yes, I have colored it in. And don't forget that down here, this is also part of the bun. So I'm gonna color that in, okay? But you can always make things a little bit more interesting by adding some colors. So again, from the multicultural pack, this is a really cool color. It's like a custard almost, a cream color. And so I'm going to add those to my sesame seeds. But I'm also going to add a little bit on top of that tan. And you can see how it warms it up because this has like a yellow tone to it. And so just gives it a little bit of a nice sort of toasty bun look. I think that looks pretty tasty. All right guys, so I'm going to keep going here and uh, before I do I want to talk real quick about the, the different shades of brown and tan and yellow because we want to create the bun, right, the fries and the burgers themselves. That's why we're not going to all use one color. So I'm going to go with this one first and I'm only going to do one french fry here but I just want to show you by itself, look at how different that is. Okay, so yes, I put it on top of this tan to warm it up, but I'm not going to put the tan on top of my fry here because it's going to look like this bun just keeps on going and going. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take this yellow and I am going to brighten this up into a really like a golden yellow color. And so suddenly we've got what looks quite a bit like a french fry. Now I said I'm not going to use the tan and I'm not going to use a lot of it. I should have said I'm not going to use much of it. I'm just going to add a little of it to the side here and then I'm done. So 
That's how you can use the same types of colors to create the different shades of brown. Lastly, the bun, I'm sorry, the burger itself. This is a really, really, really dark brown. So one thing you can do is you can kind of create sort of a, almost like a little bit of a border. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm not actually coloring in straight lines on this burger because the burger has a different texture than the bun does. So I'm adding a few spots here and there. But then I'm gonna go back with my tan and I'm just gonna go over it and let the brown and the tan just kind of blend together a little bit. Now, if that's not quite as dark as I want it to be, which it's fine, it's, it's actually pretty good, I can go back a little bit more with my brown and just kind of make it look speckly. We want to help show the texture, so I, uh, I think that looks pretty good. So anyway, I did all of that so far with these colors, guys, and you can see how different each looks, okay? All right, so we're going to do some time lapse now, and then we're going to keep on going. I'll come back and talk more when it's time to do the chalk. Here we go. guys I think it looks pretty good I think this you know it's just a fun drawing in general but it just looks really tasty uh, a couple things I wanted to point out to you before we do the chalk so as you can see I tried to make the bun look different than the fries and these little seeds aren't sticking out enough so I'm gonna go ahead and hit them with a little bit of yellow yellow really brightens things up in this drawing a lot gives it that sort of golden color which you know you really want so you'll notice I added it to the cheese I even added it to the lettuce, um, I've added it to the bun and to the french fries. And also, if you add anything to your drawing, always do it with a sharpie. Remember, you draw with a sharpie, but if you add anything after you get going with your colors, add it with a sharpie. Notice I didn't add the ketchup on here with just a red, I added it with a sharpie, then I colored it in. You want everything to have that nice, bold, strong sharpie line. Also, um, I just want to point out to you that another reason to have multiple sets of markers so this is Crayola's uh, traditional red right here so it's just sort of more of a, a sort of a warm orangey red but this one's called infrared and it's maybe hard to see I don't know if you can see it but it's just slightly pink and so what it does is it gives you a little bit of an opportunity to create light and shadow even with your reds so I added it on the tomatoes I added it on the cherry and on the ketchup and so it's just a really neat way to add a little bit more variation to your color choices. So I am done with the markers now. I'm going to move on to the chalk pastel. And so also, real quick, I added a little bit of gray. I wanted to, before, I'm sorry, before I go on. This gray down here at the bottom, this is a nice way to create sort of a grounding shadow, which means it really places these things on the ground and it creates a little bit of, a, you know, visual where it's it just makes sense that it's and you can do it the whole way around I mean some people do that that's another thing it looks good but I like to make it look like these are on you know the ground and one way to do that is to create this gray border going around the bottom half okay you might not think it's a big detail and it's not but it's it's a subtle detail but it really your eye picks it up and makes it look really really cool all right guys so chalk pastel when it's a rub okay I'm gonna move this out of the way so I've got my cotton balls, I've got my Q-tips, I've got my paper plates that I love so much. I'm going to go ahead and get my, my wipe ready because you know what? Clean up with chalk pastel is always got to be on your mind. It's wonderful, but it's messy. So taking the lid off, I'm looking at my chalks here. I have a lot of bright colors. I chose purplish blue for this because purple and yellow are complementary colors. I could do anything I want in the background. I think I'm gonna do like a green though. And so I have this great green here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it on the plate. See how I'm scraping it on the plate? I'm holding the plate firmly with my hands. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of this other green, if I can get a hold of it. And I don't need as much of it, only a little. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow. And I'm gonna go over here. So now that I have those, it's time to do a quick wipe of the fingers. Move this out of the way so you can't make any big accidental mistakes like I've done many times where you 
stick your arm in the chalk pastel and next thing you know it's all over so here we go I'm gonna bring this back over I'm gonna pick up my cotton ball and I'm going to just make sure yep we're in view here I want to make sure this is not out of the way I'm gonna start rubbing and that's why I call this chalk rub so I'm rubbing the chalk on the plate with the cotton ball I'm stirring it that's why the plates nice because it has these ridges it kind of like cups it that's so it doesn't go all through, everywhere and now I have my cotton ball loaded with chalk so I'll move this just for this demonstration so now I'm going to just gently start to add this into my drawing and it's okay if it goes over the marker a little bit you don't have to be super precise with this just don't rub it you don't want to smudge it so I'm going to rub the chalk dust if you ever get an overload of chalk dust on your paper you can just use your uh, like this take a nice deep breath before it and then lean over your paper and blow that dust off so you can see I went over my straw a little bit it's no big deal don't worry about it just get your chalk dust see how I'm doing it in stages I'm not trying to do it all at once just doing it a little at a time you'll notice I'm kind of avoiding the little itty bitty areas and that's because I'm going to use those uh, q-tips in just a moment but I'm using this cotton ball for the big areas if you use a q-tip for every area it's going to take you forever and it's not going to be their best result so you can see how I'm using the cotton ball for the bigger areas all right set that aside <laughs> looks pretty good already so I'm going to go back I'm going to pick up the dust with my q-tip you really don't need a lot of dust some people are like I don't have any more dust well you do you probably have quite a bit so you don't need a lot so I'm just going to rub it into these little areas pick up my dust this does not take that long but it really looks good that's a little container in the middle here of ketchup and uh, if you accidentally make it green or whatever color your background is it's not a big deal but it's easy to do that so just be mindful just kind of think about it a little bit and just know that if you accidentally do something that you feel like is a mistake you can always just try drawing this again just for fun working you know art is always a work in progress that just means you don't have to be absolutely perfect you have, the most important thing is that you're always willing to try and try again because each time you try you're doing yourself a favor you're doing you know doing good for your brain doing good for your body it's kind of like taking vitamins it's really you, you just can't do wrong go wrong if you're making some art and having some fun all right guys I'm gonna say that that is sufficiently done so I'm gonna set this aside I'm gonna make sure I wipe off my fingers and set that aside <laughs> I think that looks pretty great but the chalk dust wants to come off so what you have to do with chalk dust is fix it to the paper which means glue it basically to the paper with hairspray and so hairspray is glue for your hair it's also glue for these tiny particles of dust and if you need your parents help please don't spray this on your own once you spray it it'll dry pretty quickly but just let it lie flat okay well guys that is it for today i hope you enjoyed this i know i did i always love drawing with you and i'm so glad and proud of you for doing your best work as well so thanks so much for that and uh, i just will see you next time friends mm -hmm.